Hello everyone and welcome to Karnataka Muslims. Supreme Court has given its verdict scrapping Jammu and Kashmir's special status under Article 370. Some see this as a move towards greater integration while others view it as a fuel to political unrest in the region. We have with us Nazish Masoodi who is a businessman and entrepreneur, a, a Kashmiri who has been living here in Bangalore for 20 years. We are going to speak with him to gain the perspectives of local people in the region on the Supreme Court's decision of scrapping the Article 370. So tell us how do you view this verdict of Supreme Court of scrapping Article 370 and how, how will it impact the community in the region? No, the article was scrapped on August 5, 2019. So this, this was just, uh, they filed a case against it and they were just waiting for a judgment to come. So I don't think the changes had already taken place. Whatever was happening was happening whether it was pre-370 or post-370, mm -hmm. the things are happening. One thing which I feel uh, has happened is that since we had no uh, political governance there and it's a president's rule, so I feel there's more accountability which is happening in Jammu and Kashmir. And that's it. I mean, it's, it's going and we will have to see uh, in the future that what would be coming as the political parties and the establishment of Jammu and Kashmir are saying that they are going to fight uh, for the restoration of Article 370. And moreover, um, uh, it was uh, just an eyewash, I feel, because it was not much of anything, this Article 370. It was already degraded uh, over a period of time. In, by the consecutive governments of the country. So it was just a bubble. And to satisfy the collective conscience of India, mm -hmm. it was scrapped. However, the developments could have taken place before as well as after. That's so, uh, how do you see this decision impacting the political landscape in the region? This, this is a very good question because see, we have seen governments, we had a period of turmoil in Jammu and Kashmir, maybe for around 20 years. We have seen governments and the government establishments thriving on that turmoil also. We have instances of corruption uh, against the political establishments or, uh, over the period of uh, 20 years when the insurgency was in Kashmir Valley. No, uh, what has affected the political system is the present scenario because they have nothing in their control. And to be honest, I feel uh, there has been changes in terms of accountability, um, in terms of uh, development, which would have taken time when there was a political representation in the country. So I think in that scenario, I feel it is good uh, it is happening, but overall development could have happened before, uh, I mean, pre-370, which has happened uh, post uh, uh, the scrapping of 370. So the development part has nothing to do with the scrapping of 370. It is in the hands of the central government. It could have been implemented at any point of time. Do you think there will be any change in the economic situation? Um, no, I have to be very much honest here that the economic situation post-2019 uh, has improved. Why? Because our main business and main GDP comes from the tourism sector. And what has happened, the tourism has grown. We have crores of tourists coming itself from across the country to the, uh, to the state of uh, Kashmir. So what is happening now? This could have happened before, but there was a fear among the people, uh, among the common uh, masses across the country that there is terrorism. So, so there wasn't. I mean, what was there before, what is there now, it's all same. Uh, I mean, pre and post scrapping of the Article 370. But this was in their mind, you know, this fear. So that fear is gone because they think that post the scrapping of Article 370, uh, now there's not much of militancy, not, no insurgency and they feel going while it was not there before also. But they still feel now it's, it's fine. So that has helped them and helped uh, them to go to Kashmir and help the people of Kashmir to grow. So uh, to be honest, the economy of Kashmir is growing because tourism is growing. That's our 
basic uh, the, the, uh, the, the major because see the uh, kashmir valley is 80 per, the whole jammu and kashmir the 80 percent of the gdp comes from kashmir valley only if, whether it is the crops the dry fruits our our horticulture and our tourism whatever you name it everything comes 80 percent of jnk comes uh, the gdp of the jnk comes from the kashmir valley and it has grown no doubt uh, some are arguing that this move is towards uh, this move aims at greater integration so how do you view uh, the concept of unity in context to this change now concept of unity uh, it's a very broader term what uh, see the federalism of a union of states can also be a united uh, mindset you know if you have hundreds of states also united together with different federalistic powers that's still unity. I mean, that's still unity. So I don't think that this is just an integration. People feel because they felt the 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 collective uh, conscience of the Indian society was that that Kashmiris are different. They are asking for freedom. They don't want to be a part of the India. Maybe that mindset uh, they are trying to the political present political establishment uh, in the country is trying to show it to them that now we have integrated more while i have i personally will say i have integrated long back i came to bangalore uh, 20 years back and i'm running a successful business here and across my i have two offices one here one kashmir valley so i think this concept of unity was already there just to satisfy and i mean maybe there are so many um, political reasons behind it and for politics people say like that otherwise we're already united <laughs> it doesn't make any difference at all so going forward what are your hopes and aspirations for the future of jammu and kashmir See, i have only the development is good development is very good obviously uh, during the uh, during uh, the period of turmoil, I have seen corruption rising not only from the state but also from the non-state actors. So I hope that the coming governments, uh, once uh, they say that they gonna restore the statehood soon, I don't know whether, because as per the verdict today, uh, it said that by September they should conduct the elections. But they are also saying that the uh, statehood should be restored soon. Mm -hmm. But I don't know whether they're going to conduct the elections as a union territory or before that they're going to restore the statehood. So the question is, once we have a government in place, whatever, uh, by the mandate of the people, it should be corruption free and the development like how it is happening should happen more. We should be developed. But the second part is that the Kashmir is a very different place. It's, it's a natural beauty. Uh, its flora, fauna is entirely different. It should not be that uh, our selfish uh, attitude should not become so bad that it should harm the uh, nature and then we should lose what Kashmir is. It should not be, it, sh it cannot become a metropolis. It has to remain Kashmir. That's what the beauty is. It should remain as it is. Development is good. I hope that more and more development takes place. I hope that we had one and a uh, half CR uh, crore of people coming. I, I expect uh, maybe two crore, let people grow. I, I know that we, uh, I mean, the tourism is high now. Everything is going on well, but fine, uh, everything. And I hope that uh, the people, the mindset of people uh, of India also changes towards Kashmir Valley, towards the people of Jammu and Kashmir, in particularly because obviously we are a Muslim majority in, uh, region, but they should know that we are also assimilated with India. But the the beauty of Kashmir Valley, what Kashmir is known for, should not be should not go. Our resources, our resources, uh, our uh, nature, they should it should not be tampered with. Because if you tamper with nature, then you know what nature does. It hits you back very badly. That's how it is. Thank you, sir. Thank you for yeah. speaking with us. We were speaking with Mr. Nazish Masudi a Kashmiri businessman and entrepreneur living here in Bangalore for more than 20 years. He was talking to us on the impact Supreme Court's verdict of scrapping Article 370 will have on the people of the region. Thank you. This is Alia Amreen for Karnataka Muslims.